What's up guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Google Chrome's local overrides to edit and modify any website on the internet. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just pull open a website that I wanna modify. So this is just the Google homepage. And just to reiterate, what local override allows us to do is to take a file that's in use by a web application and edit it any way we want, save that local edit locally, and Chrome will reference that local file instead of the remote file. And what this allows you to do is edit any website. And you can do this to any file. So you could do it to an HTML file, a CSS file, a JavaScript file. And this is actually really useful for better understanding code behind an application, but also as far as development goes, it's easy to reference local files instead of having to push those files remotely and then having the server retrieve those files. So I'm gonna show you guys how to actually do this. So we're on google.com. Let's start really easily. If we take the Google search button, let's try to change the verbiage on this button. So we're gonna to try to change it from Google search to find stuff. How about that? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm on a Mac. So I just uh, hit command option I, which opens the developer tools. If uh, you're on a PC, um, you could do F12. You can also just right click and do inspect and that will open the developer tools at the bottom here. We're going to toggle over to the sources tab and this uh, sources uh, just provides all the files that are in use by the application. And then what I like to do is what's called a deep search. So I think on a Mac it's command option F. On a PC I think it's like uh, control alt F but we're trying to get this guy to show up here this search bar here and this will search through any file in the application so if I search for the verbiage Google search I should be able to find the file that references that so this is actually what I expected it pulled up one file called index that is what I expected. Index.html is the markup of this actual page where I expect to find that verbiage. Now applications are built differently. Sometimes you know, the HTML components aren't actually in the HTML file. It's, it's post-rendered with JavaScript. So keep that in mind. It could, it could always come from um, a, a different source than we expect. But this architecture seems uh, fairly typical. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click this file and it's gonna pull it up here. And then now that I have the file pulled up here, I'm gonna do a control F and look for that verbiage again. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to expand this here and we're gonna click overrides and then we're going to select a folder. So as we start editing the application files, we need to save it somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just choose my desktop as the folder. And basically you're allowing Chrome to write to local disk. So we gotta give that permission. And note that enable local overrides, this checkbox is checked. So this checkbox is gonna determine when we open an, uh, the website in question, should Chrome apply the override or not? And uh, we, we just wanna be cognizant of this checkbox because I'm gonna make an edit to google.com, but I don't want uh, that, that override to um, persist moving forward forever. So I'm gonna to wanna to uncheck this or I'm gonna to wanna to just remove the override files, one or both of those. Um, but for now, we want to enable the override. And Google's going to take care of, uh, I mean, Chrome is going to take care of managing the file. All we need to do now is edit the file. Actually, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to just change Google search with find my stuff, and we're going to do it globally on the file. And then we're going to go ahead, see the asterisk there. We're gonna do Command S, which is gonna save it. The asterisk goes away. And then let's reload our site. So 
Now we just edited this um, page. We changed Google search to find my stuff. So say I wanted google.com to support a dark mode. I could kind of make my own version of dark mode by coming into the HTML here and just slapping some CSS rules in the head. So I'll do style. And then we could do uh, body background color black important and then let's do color white important and then if I save that and then reload so now I kind of have my own dark mode version of the application so I can really modify it any way I want. Okay, so say we wanted to actually modify the JavaScript code. Um, let's actually do an example of that. So basically, when I type a search term, um, an AJAX call is issued to a web server to pull auto suggestions. And you can see it right in the network tab here. And the API is And the API is google.com forward slash complete forward slash search. And the first query parameter is Q equals, and then it passes the search term. So if I want to determine where this comes from in the code, there's two ways. One is I could look at this guy here, and I could click that. The other, though, is I could just, I could just know that the code is going to contain this API path here, right? Because it's got to be somewhere in the code. So if I just copy that, and I come back over to sources, and then I do my deep search, and then I search for it, I see it right here. And if we take a look at this function here, so keep in mind that most websites will have more legible code than this. Google just does hyper optimization, and you end up with this code that's very hard to read. But at the end of the day, you can still read it. Um, this is the function here that makes the call uh, to, for auto suggestions and you can see this is where they put the parameters in there and this one Q is the search term and I'm guessing F is going to be the actual search term so how can we confirm that well, let's just insert some code in here I'm going to do console.log F and I expect uh, I expect the search term to be logged to the console um, let's go ahead and reload and let's see if that happens yep look at that so you can see that function is doing what we expect it to do so one thing we could do that would be kinda cool is if we come back over to sources we could overwrite F right so I could do F equals so we've been logging the search query to the console, but one thing we could do is we could actually overwrite it. And something that would be kind of interesting is if we said F equals, and then we preface the search term with some arbitrary phrase, like, I don't know, Joe Biden, but we keep the, uh, the user search term, so we're going to append F, it's going to give everything everything we search for is going to be related to Joe Biden specifically so if I go ahead and save this and then I reload the page and then if I search for like vaccine it says Joe Biden vaccine if I search for money it says Joe Biden money if I search for height it says Joe Biden's height so it's just prefacing each search term with our arbitrary search phrase so this just kind of gives you an idea of how you can kind of like reverse engineer applications, modify them to your own needs. And I find it as someone who see, uh, kind of learns through example and illustration, I find this to be a really useful way to understand applications. So if you found this video useful, go ahead and hit that like button and thanks for listening.